Imagine this, you are scuba diving. Deep down, you look around, you're not seeing your dive buddy. Suddenly, when you take breaths from your regulator, it's starting to get harder and harder. You start feeling a little bit of panic. You look down at your air gauge, it still shows you up air. What do you do? Are you suffering a mechanical failure of your system? Where is your dive buddy? Everything's going wrong. Maybe you're in an out of air situation. Maybe you've been in an out of air situation and you can empathize with this, this fear that you'll be feeling. Today in scuba diving, running out of air is still one of the prime ways that scuba divers die. So just by dismissing it as a preventable thing is not doing it justice alone. It is preventable and for the most part, if you do the right things, you will prevent those out of air situations or have the right redundancies if it does happen to you. In this video, I want to cover everything you need to know about running out of air and making sure that doesn't happen to you. And if it does, you'll be ready for it. First, let's talk about the rigor it takes to prevent most out of air situations. So for one, and the obvious one, is building the habit of checking your air gauge. As a beginner diver, you may still be getting used to your buoyancy control and your rate of air consumption. But as you mature and you experience more dives, you'll start finding that your rate of air consumption is fairly predictable. And it's important to know the deeper you are, the more you will consume. And so it's important to know your plan depth and never try to exceed that. For most recreational divers, you will hang around 20 meters and sometimes going down to 30 meters. If you're doing a deep dive, and I recommend a more advanced diver to do a deep dive, you will go down to 40 meters. But that is if you are an experienced diver and you're ready for that. I would never recommend exceeding that unless you have the proper training and experience. With that said, if you stay within those limits, you should well be in a conservative depth where you shouldn't see vast changes in your air consumption. You can expect it to increase the deeper you are and the longer you stay down there, but it shouldn't be like shockingly increased. But the important thing is know where you're going. So if you're gonna do most of your dive at 20 meter, go straight down to 20 meter and try to stay around 20 meter. There's of course things to see, shark, turtle, you know, you might be going up and down, but try to keep it within four meters plus or minus and stay well within that depth range and you can just watch your air gauge i would recommend like every five minutes or so checking the air gauge and just seeing where it's at and your rate of consumption what's important and a lot of people don't realize is when you start getting into the red of your air gauge you are starting to get in a danger zone where potentially your regulator with the pressure differential in your tank may stop being able to dispense air at a rate that you're accustomed to and want. And so you might start feeling resistance. And this doesn't necessarily mean you're out of air or necessarily that you're having an equipment failure, but it might feel like it's getting harder and harder to breathe. Because the depth of where you're at, it is getting harder to breathe the air out of your tank. And so that is, of course, a warning sign that you should start ascending and it'll become easier to breathe. So going back to the story I mentioned at the very start, it is important to note that this does not necessarily mean you're out of air. And it is a definite sign they should start ascending. But to start, I challenge you to start practicing every five minutes and you can use your dive computer or have your dive buddy remind you or practice reminding your dive buddy every five minutes check the air gauge ask each other what each other's air is you're trying to build the muscle of just checking your air gauge often you don't want to be like the person who waits 50 minutes looks down one time and finds oh i'm almost out of air that is really risking it you need to have the muscle of checking it even if you have one of the emitters that uh, emit your air to your watch, I would still check your pressure gauge every now and then because I have seen those emitters running out of battery and falsely reporting the correct air pressure that's left. So you should always have redundant air gauge and, and just check that air gauge every so often. Five minutes for anyone who doesn't have the emitter. Practice, practice, practice. Next, make sure you do an equipment check before you even begin to dive. Another result of running out of air could be an equipment 
failure. And being that there's usually an O-ring that is connecting to your regular. And that O-ring is very common to get old. So I would, before you put your regulator on it, check the O-ring for cracks and see if it's in decent condition. Then put your regulator on it, put pressure on it, and just listen carefully for a whistle. And if you hear whistling, then it's probably unsatisfactory and it's a good time to change out that O-ring and check to make sure it's gonna hold under pressure for the duration of the dive. I've been in a situation, I've dove down to 20 meters and then pop, a big explosion happened at my back and I quickly saw my air gauge going until I ran out of air. And so I had to make some really quick decisions. And so this can happen to anyone. And I'll get into a little bit about how to handle those emergency situations in a little bit. But I just want you to realize that it's not always your fault. And so just doing a general equipment inspection may help prevent these equipment failures. Of course, in this case, honestly, I was a new diver still, and I wasn't doing these equipment inspections. But I will say this happened to me I am checking fairly regularly. So sometimes you live and learn, but that's a dangerous situation. And it, one thing I want you to walk away from this video from is checking that over. Further, once you start to dive, especially your check dive, you do a general equipment check. Even if it's your own equipment, check your dive button. You look at their equipment, do you see bubbles? It's common, it's very common to see bubbles, but you shouldn't see a lot of bubbles from your equipment. Usually a little leak is not too abnormal. You just don't wanna see a big leak. And if you do see a small leak, it can be adjusted on sequential dives. You don't need to abort the dive or anything. I would say you can still have a decently long dive. And especially if it's your check dive, it's the perfect time to spot bubbles, but just look each other over. Check the tank and the connection to the regulator. Do you see any bubbles? Sometimes the connections on the other parts of the regulator or even the BCD could also be causing bubbles and these could be points of failure. If the bubbles are big, check the pressure of the airdrop. You might still be able to enjoy a little bit of the dive. If you really see that it's dropping quickly, it's probably better to abort, get new equipment, get the equipment fixed and then dive again with better equipment. So check your equipment before you start to dive and then do a buddy check when you jump in the water just to make sure you don't see the bubbles, which would indicate some kind of pressure loss from the system. Further, some other mistakes is trying to dive too deep. As I mentioned, you shouldn't be ever exceeding 30 meters, especially as a beginner. If you are gonna go down to four meters, you should have experience and anything under four meters is a technical dive and you should never do that unless you are doing a planned technical dive. It should never be an accident. So watch your depth and make sure you stay above it and there shouldn't be any surprises. But for beginners, they think they're doing something cool or something dangerous or it's really ignorant. They could drop down and suddenly see that their air gauge is dropping very quickly and you'll find your no deco time counting down, which is a completely separate thing than your amount of air. But when you have expired and you go into deco, you need to have extra time to have extra safety stops to let the nitrogen out of your body. And so this takes extra time. And so you're risking decompression sickness in exchange for it the dumb mistake. So as long as you keep to your plan, the depth of where you're going and try not to exceed that depth, you'll be okay. Ah, by the way, I'm not gonna go too much in detail in this video, but it's also important to know that a good way to prevent getting out of air is improving how much air you're using. So I have a great video for you to watch and I'm gonna link it in a card above on improving your air consumption. Check it out. All right, we talked about things that you can do to help mitigate a lot of the things that could go wrong and prevent this out of air situations. But this is preventing the known unknown, being that there are things that you know that can happen and that can go wrong. But let's talk about the unknown unknowns, when things can go wrong and be beyond your imagination. And so there are a bunch of system of redundancies at play that will help you in an emergency. Let's start off with a story. So I was diving in Socorro 
and my friend was very generous and very charitable with his oxygen supply with the mantas and so the mantas supposedly I don't think they like the air but I've seen a lot of people blow air and they seem to go through it. My friend was one of those individuals contributing their air. So basically taking your spare regulator and pushing the button and injecting some air to create some bubbles and seeing the mantas gently fly through your bubble. I don't recommend it and I also don't think they like it. So take it for what you will. Being, you can't stop everyone from being so charitable. But where things went wrong is my friend had donated the last of his air to the mantas and I'm sure the mantas are very grateful for this contribution but when he looked down and saw his air gauge and found that it is suddenly becoming very hard to breathe he had to make some critical decisions this is a very dangerous situation and the only reason I'm sharing this story is so you can see how just some mistakes some honest mistakes and even having fun mistakes can happen to anyone and I want you to be more conscious of making those mistakes. Learn from other people's mistakes. With that said, there's fortunately a system built into scuba diving and that is the dive buddies. Being that you should always, when you start a dive, have one other person there with you that is your designated dive buddy. You two should know each other. Ideally, if you're friends, that's great. If you know each other, then make it easier. If you don't, introduce yourself and usually if you're with a dive master they'll pair you up but you should always have somebody that you're gonna designate as a dive buddy if someone does it for you that's great if not go meet someone and find hey you're my dive buddy you know watch each other's back and introduce yourself tell them your skill level tell them if you have any special concerns it's great to make a dive buddy maybe they'll become a new friend regardless in scuba diving your dive buddy is your redundancy air supply being that if there's a total emergency or you're so contributable or you're very generous with your air supply to the wildlife your dive buddy is your next best bet of survival being i'm out of air so What's important is you need to go get your dive buddy's attention. You can bang on a tank or go to them really quickly, hit them really hard, get your attention. And as soon as they're looking you in the eye, you make this signal. It means you're out of air and it's a critical situation. You might be panicking. So all you need to do is this. If you're really panicking, grab their spare regulator. I would advise not to just rip out the regulator out of their mouth, but this is gonna just cause extra panic. If you can, go for your spare, make this signal, and your dive buddy should contribute either their primary regulator straight into your mouth or their spare. I've heard it advised differently, whatever you guys are comfortable with, but this is something you can establish beforehand and talk about. If there is an emergency, I will give you my alternate air supply, or I will take my air supply, the one that's in my mouth, and give that. It's just something that's really easy to communicate, and if you just talk about that for 10 seconds, if there's an emergency, it's gonna make both of you feel a lot easier about the situation. And it's in those emergencies, you do not have time to communicate. Things, you're gonna be panicking, there's gonna be stress on both sides. And so the more you talk about it, the more you're prepared for it, the more you're mentally just are ready for it, the better it's gonna be, and the faster you're gonna react if something does go wrong. It's an emergency, or maybe you goofed and contribute all your After that, it's important to either lock hands and one person's right over your shoulder, or they, you can grab their BCD and they can grab your BCD and you're locked together like that. And then you can start ascending, do the safety stop and abort to dive. Now that's an ideal situation. And I believe the dive buddy system works for 95% of the cases. But there are some people who choose to dive solo or in a situation where maybe your dive buddy's lost, you've gotten separated. I've seen situations where there's heavy current and there's a separation of your dive buddy. And if all these things stacked up against you and the probabilities are out of your favor, then in this case, there is a situation which I would recommend and everyone could wear it, a pony bottle. A pony bottle 
is a critical bottle for self-reliance as a scuba diver. Tech divers will use it and I wouldn't expect most recreational divers to use it, but it's not a bad habit especially if you're doing advanced terrain and current diving to have a pony bottle readily available. It's a small bottle that if you do run out of air, you can take some breaths out of it. It's not enough to dive on, but it's there to help get you to the surface, do a safety stop and ascend at a safe and slow rate where you probably have minimal risk of decompression sickness. So this is the best case scenario. It's meant to help you in a crazy situation still be able to ascend slowly and prevent decompression sickness. And it's basically just a tank you'll have attached and just ready for that rare circumstance. And if you're doing everything else, it's likely never to happen, but you just never know. There could be a critical gear failure. There's all sorts of things that could just be out of your favor. And with all these redundancies, it's also important to work with your dive buddy and occasionally just practice, even practice by yourself practicing for emergencies, emergency air sharing, where you just indicate and practice to your dive buddy. You could actually just do it with your dive buddy, especially if they're your friend, just say every now and then I'm gonna pretend I'm out of air and just let's just go through the drill and see and fulfill it. And you can always just kind of randomly do it on some of the end of dives just to be prepared and it's that mindset. So if it really does happen, you will both know what to do. Further practice with the pony bottle and be comfortable using it. A pony bottle is also called a bailout bottle. So either terminology works. All right, we talked so far about ways to prevent getting out of air. And if you do run out of air, redundant options to still safely end your dive. Now let's talk about really the thing that I never hope that happens to you, but the hard choices you have to make if you're out of air and you have no redundant system. You mean you have no dive buddy, you have no pony bottle or bailout bottle, and now you have to make some choices to save your life. Please do use any other option before approaching these because they do have some extreme risks. But you're going to make these decisions to take on these risks because the risk of dying from drowning is definitive while decompression sickness is probable. So you have a less chance of dying from decompression sickness than you do of drowning. If you drown, it's game over. If de you get decompression sickness, there is chances that you still may survive. So it's better to take your odds, roll the die, and see what happens. However, there is no guarantee you will live. So please do prevent these from ever happening. In the ideal situation, you'll be able to always perform a normal ascent. And this is always the ideal. If you have run out of air or are running out of air, What's important to note is you can make a faster ascent than what is safe, being you're going to increase your odds of decompression sickness in favor of getting to the surface faster. Decompression sickness is not guaranteed death. It could cause permanent damage to your body, but you could survive and live again to see another day. And if you're lucky, maybe still scuba dive, but there is no guarantee. So if you make a decision and you're running out of air, you could try to ascend a little bit faster by swimming. This is not adding air to your BCD. As pressure of air is getting smaller in your tank, you will be more positively buoyant than you actually started your dive with. So you will probably be positively buoyant by the end of your dive and shouldn't have too much issue going to the surface. So trying to swim towards the surface may be a decent option but you have to remember to breathe out. Mainly just keep on breathing. You want to avoid panicking and breathing too fast, but you also want to avoid just holding your breath and going straight to the top because you will risk yourself from lung expansion, which could blow up your lungs, which nobody wants. And this is why everyone suggests that you don't hold your breath, especially while ascending. So you have to keep on breathing, but you don't need to take full breaths. It could be shallow as long as you're still breathing and equalizing your lungs. Your goal is to swim towards the surface at a faster than safe limit, which means you're exposing yourself, but you're still going to have lower than normal risk. And lastly, your last resort 
with maximum risk of decompression sickness would be I am totally out of air. I have taken my last breath and I have last dish effort. Your best bet is to drop your weights and perform an emergency buoyant ascent. Now this is really high chance of getting decompression sickness. And that's why all scuba divers are trained to avoid this kind of thing. And a lot of people would suggest that you don't drop your weights. It could destroy precious coral, but if your life is at risk, you have to make this decision to drop the weight. One actual interesting thing is that filling your BCD doesn't take as much pressure as trying to breathe air out of your regulator. So even if you feel you're not getting air out of your regulator, it should still be possible to get some puffs, some air in your BCD. So you just take that thing to the maximum and you will shoot to the surface. This is the uh, maximum ascent that you could possibly get with all of your gear. Being that you dropped your weights and filled your BCD full, you have to also continue to make sure you're breathing and, and equalizing your lungs or else you'll be risk with lung expansion. The nitrogen will be ripping and tearing through your body and it will not be in a good state when you reach the surface. But it is better than drowning. And so if you have other people there, they can start performing emergency procedures for decompression sickness and you still have a chance of surviving, which is better than if you were to drown. Now it really pains me to describe these situations. I've never had to do them myself and I hope you never have to do them either. But it's worth knowing for completionist safety. And if you have to make this decision, take it heavy handedly because there are risks to it, but it will give you the best odds of surviving to see another day. So how do we prevent that? Make a dive buddy friend and make sure you're going diving with a friend or really comfortable with using a bailout bottle or pony bottle and check those air gauges frequently. I want you to be a safe diver and have many years ahead of you enjoying the oceans and the beautiful things that there are to explore out there. Ah, and by the way, if I piqued your interest at all in current diving, then I have the perfect video for you to watch next. It's a great place to go for current diving and seeing some beautiful creatures such as whale sharks and mantas. Maybe you'll see a sailfish, tiger sharks, some pretty cool stuff. Check it out. The Maldives. Let me know what you think here. Until next time.